Our road trip and crew spent time in Southeast learning about the region's Alaska Native history and culture. They heard fascinating stories of totem poles and how they're being preserved. Sean McGuire has the story. I'm at the Totem Heritage Center in Ketchikan to learn about some very special totem poles that are well over a century old. They would carve out that area. Teresa DeWitt, a guide at the center. The totem poles behind me here come from two different groups. The two from the left here on this side of me come from a Tlingit village and the three on my right come from the Haida village. Teaches me about Tlingit, Haida and Simpsian heritage. There are ornate bentwood boxes used to hold seaweed and salmon. So even though it's well over a few decades old, you can still smell that food in there. To elaborately decorated masks. When they share the stories, they would have different people depicting the characters. DeWitt tells me some of the reasons totem poles are built, from helping to tell stories. Now the totem poles here, they could be raised to honor somebody that passed away or a new clan leader being placed in a position. Or this one with rings carved into it to show each time a clan held potlatches or gift giving ceremonies. So you know right off the bat by looking at this that this clan right here is very wealthy, mm. but not wealthy as in money, but wealthy that they have a lot of skill, a lot of cooperation to come together to complete these events. These poles could be over 200 years old. Some are laying horizontally to preserve them. So quite a few of them, they had to lay horizontal because if you look at them, the decay process makes it very fragile. So some of them, when you touch them, it actually has a crumbling effect. And they have suffered vandalism from some sections carved off by souvenir hunters to some poles that have been shot. They're taken down and they're being shot at. They're being used as target practices because there are some bullets. The process of preserving these poles was controversial. Traditionally, once carved, they could never be repainted or repaired. Part of our monks are Shlinket, Haida and Simpsian people is that what we take from the land, we give back. But by the 1970s, the decision was made to save these poles and preserve them as is. But this heritage center is also about the present and the future. So this here becomes our classroom. Teaching carving, weaving and canoe building to a new generation. Helping to protect these poles and these cultures. I love the thought that that generation was thinking of the generations to come. And to ensure that this vibrant Alaska Native heritage is not relegated to history. Ketchikan, which is the traditional way we say it. Road tripping from Ketchikan, Sean McGuire, Alaska's news source.